really quick to do an overview of D&D Beyond and how I use it. So D&D Beyond is, like I said in a previous stream, one of the best tools that I use. Um, I use it to find things quickly at the table, whether it is spells or, you know, rules, uh, feats, racial modifiers, all sorts of things. And um, it's really useful. Now, some of the stuff that's also really cool on here is the articles. There, it's changed a little bit since I've been on here last time, but they have a lot of cool things like Dungeon Master tips. And I believe anybody can use this. You don't need to be paying for D&D Beyond for the articles here. Um, so session zero, you can go in there and read all about it. Uh, how to play a devil like a lawyer from hell. <laughs> um, not half bad, playing mixed race characters. One-on-one uh, -on -one games. How to play a werewolf like an apex predator. And then older articles. And again, you can just go through this. There's a ton of stuff. This is just the DM tips one. So a lot of good, good articles, right? Um, the other stuff that I like to use, uh, the character builder, which I have shown already. Um, I have not used the encounter builder yet. I'm really looking forward to checking that out, but, uh, have not used it yet. Uh, in here, you can easily pull up anything you want to, want to read. Uh, I'm currently running Descent into Avernus, Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus, and I use this all the time for that, and I'm really, really, really enjoying it. Uh, game rules. This is, again, where I would possibly pull up different spells, classes, um, monsters. Uh, I, I search the monsters here pretty frequently for things. Uh, I'll search uh, magic items here. Whoops. Um, I haven't used the uh, vehicles. I have used the, the backgrounds, though, because my groups, uh, not all of them like using D&D Beyond, to be honest. A lot of my in-person groups like to use the books still. And so while they use the book, they might ask a question, and I usually will come on here, and I'll quickly find it and answer their question. Um, homebrew collection. I don't think I've added anything there. I have quite a few campaigns on here. Uh, you'll see here I've got five campaigns on here. This one, Elves of Assault Alice, is dead right now. So I'm just going to deactivate that. Uh, Adventures Gauntlet is deactivated that so right now i've got three campaigns on here i need to add a fourth but we got descent into avernus uh this one is my wednesday game which if i view the campaign i should go in and change can i change the name of it i should be able to uh, it doesn't look like it'll let me edit campaign so this is the Forgotten Throne, which we air every Wednesday here on Twitch. And uh, I'm really enjoying that campaign a lot. Love the group. We just fought, um, or they just fought a pretty tough encounter last time. The giant flower, corpse flower, whatever it's called. And uh, yeah. This one, we've played only one session. One character has died already, and I believe that was Scale. Yeah, Scale down here. Um, but yeah, let's see. So I need to edit this campaign, and I'll just call it Island Voyages of Thakos. And save it. Um, but yeah, that's been a fun game as well. We've played that once. Um, unfortunately, our schedules and sicknesses and family things, a lot of things have come up that have prevented us from playing that campaign more. Um, Descent to Avernus, we've played a few sessions now. We missed our last one because the plague passed through my house. Uh, we had sick babies. I was sick. My four-year-old was sick. My wife got sick. I think my eight-year-old is the only one that did not get sick. She had she got the the nasally congestion part of it, but she didn't get the other stuff. So I think it was like three illnesses that passed through our house in the same week. It was awful. 
So we missed our game there, but we will be playing Descent into Avernus on uh, February 1st, February 2nd. It's that Saturday, whatever day that is. And uh, that'll be with Luke from the DM Lair, Nate from WASD20, Jake from Mini Terrain Domain, and Paula from Awkwardly Nerdy, which is, you know, that's that's our group. It's going to be awesome. We've Two characters have died in that game. Uh, Forgotten Throne, nobody has died, but I did have one of our characters lose his foot, which was awesome because he reworked it into his character's backstory. Uh, or not backstory, but into his story and changed the direction of his character because of it, which was kind of cool. Um, and then, like I said, Island Voyages, we lost a character. So I've killed three characters in the last, like, four months in these games. Uh, and I've got, like I said, a new campaign starting next month, which I'll just start this right here, right now. I don't know what I'm going to call it yet. Unnamed. Unnamed Gaming instead of unmade gaming <laughs> that's for you michael <laughs> unnamed gaming <laughs> uh, all right so there's that now i'm wondering if i want to because i'm limited you can only do three games or three campaigns that have access to D D beyond um I don't know what happens if you disable content sharing, if that does anything to their characters. I think they'll still be able to access it and level them, but I don't know. Um, but yeah, I guess we're okay for now, the way it is. So I'll just leave it alone. Uh, worst case scenario, I will disable content sharing on one of those and put it to that one, um, at least for character creation. But I don't know, maybe that won't work. It'd be great if I could have it on up to five campaigns, <laughs> but that's okay. Or four campaigns, I should say. All right. So that's that. Um, all right. So under here, my homebrew collection. So I use homebrew stuff occasionally. I like to go through and read things and add stuff that I like. So I only got a couple pages here of things that I was like, oh, that might be kind of cool. So we've got those. Um, let's see. If you go under here, you can create your own homebrew stuff or browse homebrew stuff. Now, just for the heck of it, let's browse some monsters. Let's look for low challenge ratings. Let's go under one. And let's filter it. Let's see what we got here. A lot of A's. Aarakocra Ranger, Noble. Let's just... Pick a random page. Uh, Acorn Platypus. Adapter Beast. What's an Adapter Beast? I don't know what an Adapter Beast is. Uh, okay. Medium Beast. Chaotic Neutral. Used for Ranger Companion. Okay. I don't know. Let's see. Let's get rid of the... Oh. In Baldur's Gate that I am playing, the enhanced version. There's gibberlings and tiny, small, small. Uh, humanoid, humanoid, aberration. This one has a lot of views, only 12 ads. This one has not as many views, but in comparison has more ads. And this one's the newest one. Let's look at this one. Let's look at the bottom one. Armor class 12. Uh, gibberlings, called so due to the noises they make, are small underdark creatures. They are known for their habit of swarming enemies with their countless numbers. So they have daggers, blowpipes. Um, armor class 12, hit points 4. Pack tactics. Insanity. The gibberling has advantage on saving throws against being charmed or frightened. And that one. Let's look at this one. Look at the, the second one that's been up there since 2017. Uh, armor class 10, hit point 7. Fear of fire, pack tactics, sunlight sensitivity. So it's very similar. Um, impression of gibberlings is of a writhing mass of fur and flesh. The pandemonium is actually a mass of pale, hunchbacked humanoids with pointed ears, black manes, and grinning faces. Their eyes are black 
and shine with a maniacal gleam. So this write-up is a lot better. The horde's forward motion slows only long enough to kill anything moving, and then continues forward, their bloodlust apparently unabated. All right. Uh, Freelancer Inc. I literally just started to build my second homebrew monster. Check out the Quar Star. All right, I'll check it out. I'm gonna look at it here in a second. Uh, I like that gibberling. Let me look at. I'm gonna. I'm gonna keep a gibberling because I want a tiny aberration, chaotic neutral. Because I want to have a. Uh... Yeah, no, I don't like that one. I like this one. I like the. The one with the good right up here that has the lower armor class with more hit points. So I'm adding that to my collection because I really like that one. And uh, yeah. All right. So you called it the Quar, Quar, Quar Star. Quar Star. I need to add my Druid Lich into here and some of the other things I've made for some of my games. Like my, my uh, stick bugs. Quar Star. Is this it? Is this from you? Freelancer Inc. 566. Uh, okay. Challenge five. So your challenge rating, did you do that based on the DM's guide? I'm just curious without looking at it so far. This one I'm just starting to build is just going to be an amped up version of an already made monster to make my life easier. <laughs> All right. Uh, so this looks tough. 130 hit points. So this is a tough one. Uh, armor class 16. That strength. Jeez. Wow. Stealth plus 14. How's it getting a plus 14 to stealth? Sheesh. That's crazy. Uh, vulnerabilities to fire, resistances, bludgeoning, and poison. Tremor sense can be considered only able to sense in the directions of arms on the ground. Passive perception 14. Jeez. Action name SWAT. Uh, Action melee attack, plus two to hit. Okay. 2d6 plus two bludgeoning damage. So its strength does not apply to its attack here? Interesting. Uh, 1d6 chance to hit spike, piercing damage, or be pushed back. Crush, plus one to hit. All within reach, 3d6 plus two bludgeoning, crushing damage. Dex save to dodge crushing arm on a Failure, player is considered grappled to the ground. Arm stays on top of player until damage is done to arm again. Every turn, player is grappled. Player must roll a d20 for all wooden stone equipment. Uh, 13, one piece of wooden stone equipment. So a 13 or less, the uh, equipment will break, I'm assuming. Um, player must roll a d20 for all wooden equipment. Okay, action name, blood squirt. Ranged attack, plus two to hit. Okay. Uh, due to vomiting. Uh, I based it off similar hit point monster. It's actually super easy if you only range attack it. I've been trying to get more feedback on it. Oh, just a single 13. It's not a fast thing. Oh, I, so my opinion, so you want my feedback on this. I don't know if I would do a, just a specific number. Um, I would probably do a range. If I was doing that uh, on top of that. So right off the bat, if I was running a game and I wasn't using D&D beyond in front of me, I would have to write all these things out. Whereas typically when I write out monsters, I will do a quick like what are their attributes and then their attacks and I'll add the attacks based on their modifier. So like strength being a plus six, uh, I would be like, oh, it can do a SWAT attack. So it's Plus six, plus proficiency is plus two. So I would say plus eight to hit. And then I would do the 2d6 plus two. And then I would automatically do the 1d6 on top of it, probably. And it wouldn't be a plus two. I would do it as a plus six damage because of the strength modifier. But that's just how I would do it. Um, I just think there's a lot of situational things here that would make it hard to remember. But it seems pretty good. Um, the only thing I'm seeing about the strength then... Because again, the stealth too doesn't relate, doesn't correlate to the dex, which is also weird because there's no magic specified in here to say why that's different. Um, so it's like it's almost like the numbers are arbitrarily picked. 
rather than having a relevance to the attacks or the actions or whatever, or the skills. Um, so I would probably do something like that. And I, obviously I haven't read this whole thing, but um, Core Stars are a land-based monster that eats all manner of wood and stone by absorbing it through its underside. Uh, Core Star is passive in nature and will not attack anything not perceived to be attacking it. They're quiet. Oh, okay. So they're they're not hostile, so they're neutral. Okay, yep. Um, they're huge. They're massive. Uh, its overside is thick hide, large spikes covering its hide. Generally one spike in a six inch area. Uh I think you mean feet, but when you use quotes, that means inches. Um, when injured, it will inherently lift its arms straight up in a 45, de- I'm assuming that means degree, angle from the ground in pain. Cannot be grappled unless player takes 1d4 plus 1 piercing damage. I would not be grappling a 3,500-pound creature. <laughs> uh, they're hatched from eggs. Start at 4 foot in diameter. And have thick hide just days after hatching, weighing in at approximately 100 pounds each. Jeez. Uh, one to four eggs, approximately two foot in diameter. Newly hatched core stars have poisonous to the touch hide until hide is solidified. Jeez. Uh, I think it sounds interesting. I think I think with some some touch up on it, I think this could be actually really cool. Um, I would, like I said, I would probably tie the stats more to the attributes. Uh, that's what I would do. But yeah, I don't mind that. Um, let's see. What else? So under homebrew, we got some other things. Let's look at let's look at some magic items. I love looking at magic items. Uh, let's look at some potions. Let's see what people got for potions. Greater Goodberry Wine. Very rare. Rare. Let's look at the rare one. Is it by the same person? It is. Rare Goodberry Wine. This classic vintage of Goodberry Wine comes in a wooden box with a red ribbon wrapped around it and a design of the mountain that the winery is based on. It has a picture of the kobold brewmaster on the cover. When you shake the bottle, the liquid inside shimmers softly. The bottle has four servings inside. When you consume a serving, you regain 10 hit points and can gain the benefit of a lesser restoration spell. Upon consuming it, you feel a strange sense of relaxation radiate through your body. I kind of like that. I'm taking that Goodberry. Uh, All right, let's go with the Life Greater Goodberry Wine. This special vintage of Goodberry Wine comes in a beautiful box with a blue ribbon wrapped around it and a design of the mountain that the winery is based on. It has a picture of the Cobalt Brewmaster giving a thumbs up on the cover. When you shake the bottle, the liquid inside glimmers and shines with a soft, radiant glow. The bottle has four servings. When you consume a serving, you regain 25 hit points and can gain the benefit of a greater restoration spell. Upon consuming it, you feel a strange sense of warmth and happiness radiate over your body. Yeah, I like that one too. I really like that. Man, it is cold out here. Oof. Um... Yeah, I like that. I love stuff like that. Um, yeah, Freelancer uh, Inc. If you're not in my Discord, join my Discord. When you uh, add stuff, just post it over there. I'd love to see some of your D&D homebrew stuff. Uh, you can post it in the Tabletop Gaming um, channel. And I will review all of them if you're you're interested. I like them. I, I like reviewing things like that. All right, let's see. So that was potions. Let's look at... Let's look at scrolls. Why not? Why not? Can you sort by ads? Let's see what the most popular one is. 205 for musings of the old masters. Written and collected by Toru while studying at the School of the Saffron Path, these sayings, phrases, and proverbs are timeless insights into the eternal suffering of existence. Roll them on the table and enlighten your party with these monk truisms. (laughs) 
<laughs> There's a hundred of them. Oh my gosh. That's, that's kind of funny. I like that. Cartographer's map, ritual spell book, scroll of communication, tome of cat summoning. Are you serious? A cat materializes and falls asleep on top of the book. If the cat takes damage, it disappears. <laughs> That's so random. My party would be so pissed if I gave that to them. Uh, this scroll can communicate with anyone who has a scroll of communication. Simply by writing the person's name and the message, then say send. It will disappear and appear on the person's scroll. You can send a message to more than one person. Oh, that is cool, but you would need more than one. But that is cool. I like that. A scroll of dragon flame. Oh, this might be good. Oh, sorry. Yeah, let me... My Discord, if you scroll down, I've got the link. Um, should be in there. Uh, let's see. I'll post it. Just a second. I will post the Discord link. I don't have a chat bot thing set up. And that is on me. I'm still figuring out this whole Twitch thing. Oh, did you end up getting it? Did that work? I just know I do not have a uh, chat bot. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, if anyone else doesn't want to look below, there it is. <laughs> uh, scroll of Dragon Flame. Yeah, I got to figure out the whole Twitch thing still. I'm still learning, but um, description. This dragon flame is made of old parchment with extremely ornate ends made of fine dwarven ruby. It is one foot in width and two feet in length when fully extended. A red seal holds it closed. And on the seal, it reads, the power within this scroll is not to be underestimated. In Draconic. Effects. The scroll, as soon as opened, will burn inwards from its edges, taking roughly 12 seconds. Once it appears to have burned the entire scroll, a 60, I'm assuming foot radius, explosion of fire will occur, dealing 6d12 fire damage. It takes one action to activate. Oh, 12 seconds. So you have two rounds to get out of. That's interesting. Mm. Yeah, I don't know what I think of that. I mean, I like it, but I That's a lot of damage. I'm going to add I'm going to add that to my collection, but I don't know if I would ever use that. Armory scroll, scroll of fireball, backstabbing. So, you know what? Now, let's look at the rings and let's see, because I did not realize you could do it based on ads. So, let's see what we got in here. Um, Moobot and Streamlabs are easy. Yeah, Streamlabs is the one I need to uh, check out. Thanks, Patrick, for joining. And uh, I will talk to you in the Discord. Take it easy, dude. Um, okay. I like looking at this stuff. Jeez, oh, Pete's. 1,367 ads for Band of the Dryad. A simple wooden band that appears to be entwined by evergreen ivy vines. The top is decorated with a small rose petal, which remains bloomed and perfect until the ring's effect is used. Okay. Each day at dawn, the petal blooms again. This band has a single charge, which recharges each day at dawn. The power contained within the rose petal may be expended to heal a target the wearer can touch by 2d4 plus 2 hit points. Well, that's not that bad. Once used, the rose petal wilts and falls off the ring, and this effect may not be used again until the next dawn. Well, that's, that's not bad. It doesn't require attunement, though. 2d4 plus 2 once per day. I'll add it. That's... That's not too over overpowered. A coin storing ring? Interesting. Alchemist ring. Blink ring. Luck ring. A boomerang. 
Ring of Lightning Strikes, Band of Fallen Leaves. A silver-coated woven band with small, enchanted, leaf-shaped pieces of green glass. The ring has four charges and regains 1d4 charges at dawn. If you expend the band's last charge, roll a 1d20. On a 1, the band loses its magic property. You can speak the command word of the spell you wish to cast and expend one charge to cast Druidcraft, Guidance, Mending, or Light. Light can only be cast on the ring, and it produces a pale green shade of light emanating from the glass. You can dismiss the light as a bonus action. So I actually like that one. That's not bad. I really like that. Do, do, do. Ring of Mage Armor, Berserk Ring, Arming Ring, Ring of Shielding. All right, I'm going to go back to potions because, again, last time I did not realize you could sort it by ads. And I'm curious what has mo the most ads for potions. Pocket Sand, Expired Healing Potion. Let's look at pocket sand. No thief worth his leathers is caught without a pocket full of this gritty mixture of finely ground glass and banshee pepper extract. Delivery is simple. When caught in an act of some questionable morality, pocket sand is flung into the face of the witness, increasing the thief's odds of a clean exit. DC 15 con saver becomes poison for one hour. Target is blinded for the duration. Vinegar used to wash eyes is the antidote. Yeah, I don't know if I like that one. Healing potion. So the potion's red liquid has turned a dark burgundy. It runs like syrup and is hard to swallow. You gauge as it settles in your stomach. You gag. Yeah, I don't think it needs an E at the end. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I'm so like critical of other people and their typing and I'm, I screw stuff up all the time. Just look at my Twitter. You regain 2d6 plus 4 hit points when you drink this potion. Also, roll 1d6 and consult the chart. Ooh, I don't like that. 1 to 2. I have to pee. Player must move at least 10 feet every turn. Effect lasts till player relieves himself. <laughs> 3 to 4. I don't feel good. Player has disadvantage on all actions and attacks till a long rest or spends a turn vomiting. 5 to 6. I... I drunk, I think, the player, they player becomes extremely intoxicated. They gain resistance to bludgeoning damage, but have disadvantage on all wisdom, intelligence, charisma-based action spells, or skills. Uh, I kind of like the expired healing potion. I'm going to add that one. I'll probably change the chart, because I think those are a little bit harsh, but I think you need to add something that doesn't hurt as much pixie dust raw interesting interesting a vial of dust maybe used as an arcane focus blah, blah 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 okay anyways you get the idea there's lots and lots of really cool things that people have made and uh you know you can always come in here check them all out uh, what is this new player guide? I don't even know what that is. How to play. Oh, that's kind of cool for newbies. Rules to remember, yada, yada, yada. Okay, that's cool. All right, I'm going to get off here. Um, I think we've about covered everything. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. I know I did. I love coming on here. I'm, maybe I'll do this again if you guys want me to browse through homebrew content i am more than happy to do that and do it live so um, if this is something you want to see more of just let me know and yeah so that is it i will see you guys next time this was master the game game on